Howdy folks. Today I want to show you how to take one of these beige candles and turn it to a nice glowing red. You can use whatever color you would like in here because you're going to add LEDs. But as you can see, these come with a standard beige color. You can buy these at flower shops. You can also get them um, on the web. Let's just say it that way. And I think I'm going to put a link down here where you can get them. There's three of these. Uh, different sizes for under $20. All right, so these are really, really simple. They take three AAA batteries. The first thing we're going to do is pop this bottom off and disconnect the wires. Here I am heating up the little uh, device at the top, and you just heat it up a little bit with a hair dryer or a hot air tool, and it pops out. And inside here is a tiny circuit board, a little inductor, and a magnet, and an LED. It's really, really, really simple. So I'm going to modify this one completely. You don't have to do all this. What we're the, the purpose of this project is to get rid of the batteries. We are going to wire this up with a USB so that you can plug it in and it will actually last or stay on forever. How's that sound? That's the idea. This is for a pet of mine and Super Dave's that we lost on October 12th. All right. So... Let's get to it here. Here are the technical stuff. Right there is a little voltage regulator. So we've got four and a half to five volts coming in, depending on how it's wired. It goes through here and it goes to this little voltage regulator. And then it goes to this little coil. And you can see this is basically an inductor that puts out a magnetic field. And the little candle part that flickers sits above it. It has a magnet on the bottom. And it waves back and forth in that magnetic field. That's as simple as it gets right there. There are a couple of resistors there. Don't have to worry about that. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is go ahead and wire up the USB power supply. So I've got some 22-gauge wire here. You see I'm nipping this off. This little kit here is a USB um, male and female kit. We're only going to use this male piece. And I'm going to mark the polarity so you can see which way the red goes and which way the black goes. I marked the others there as well, but we're only going to need these two terminals. So we want to pre-tend this, and if you do the pre-tending, these will just lay right in there once you uh, put the solder tool on them. And the next step is going to be to get out a pair of pliers here and twist down these little ears. These are essentially strain reliefs, and it keeps it all together. Not too hard to do at all. Okay, and then now it's for the time for the clamshell. Now, you don't have to glue these. I have noticed that they do tend to fall apart over time, so I don't want to have to mess with this again. So CA glue it is. You could put um, a rubber band on this. You could put... Um, electrical tape you could even put shrink tubing on it but i don't want to ever have to take it apart again so i'm putting ca glue aka crazy glue all right so now we're going to strip off the other end here and i'm showing you how the rip cord works there's there's some people in the live stream said they didn't know that the rip cord was in there like that i didn't either till about a year ago all right, so this is the other end of it now this is the back of the candle and i'm marking up my places here where I'm going to have the cable go through. And I'm also going to have a potentiometer on this. This one's a little more complicated than some. You don't have to put the potentiometer. You can just have it a certain brightness and leave it there. But I like to have the ability to turn it up and turn it down. So we're going to just shove these through this bottom hole. It was about 3 16 of an inch on the hole. Maybe a little less. And I always use zip ties. I put one on the inside and one on the outside. And it just uh, works the best. It never goes anywhere. One would have been fine, but I like to put them on each side. I'm trimming those off. Now, this is the potentiometer that I'm going to use. You don't have to use one, but if you're going to use one, it doesn't really matter the value as long as it's more than 100 ohms. This is a 20,000 ohm. This is something I've salvaged from mixing boards. We're going to measure the, the diameter of the shaft here so we know how big of a hole to drill. And you can see there it's about 7 millimeters. And I've got my step bit here, 7.6, close enough. This is going to be, you know, we're not building the space shuttle here. So this is going to work just fine. All right. So that made 
a little bit of a mess, so I got my deburr tool out and just want to make sure it fits down in there. Now we'll cinch this up later. There's a nut and a washer that goes over this, and we'll do that towards the end of the video when we get everything put together. So now we're going to use these legs here. So essentially, we just need these two terminals. Our voltage in from our USB goes on the first terminal right there. And the thing that you want to control, in this case, it's going to be four LEDs, goes on the second or the middle leg. We're not going to use the third leg. So right now what I'm doing is taking off the original amber colored bulb that comes with these and I'm putting in a flicker bulb. You don't have to do this either, but I wanted mine to look more and more like a candle. So I'm putting in a flicker bulb and I'm showing here the polarity is a long leg. So before you actually tack this down, you want to get the casing out and make sure that it fits in there because there's a little place there for the rim of that hat to sit. And you can see here I'm just kind of tacking it down temporarily. And again, you can just put the USB on this and just run it like it was. And you don't even have to take this stuff apart as far as that's concerned. But let's get some good uh, 6337 Kester leaded solder in here. And then I'll straighten this up in just a second. It's in there just a little crooked. We're going to put down the positive. You can see there I got uh, solder over to the uh, little voltage regulator. And we just need to clean that up a little bit. Couldn't be a simpler little setup for these boards. But what they do is it works perfectly. All right, so I've skipped ahead a little bit here. I went ahead and put this case back together. You put the PCB board back in it. You can see I've got it powered up with my power supply, and I'm just gluing it back together. This is an air duster, and it works really, really good to actually cool down the hot glue so you don't have to sit and wait so long. That's the reason I use it. And I'm putting it in there real good because I don't want it to fall apart. Now this will last for a long time. And you can see also as well, I changed the wires that came with it. It had a, a yellow and a black, I think. So this is how we're going to figure out how many uh, ohms of resistance we need for each LED. So we're putting in three red LEDs, but we're only going to say that we're putting in one because they're going to go in parallel. So we've got one LED. Our supply voltage is five volts. That's our USB. The forward voltage right there is 2 volts on a red LED, and we want it to be a maximum of 20 milliamps. That is their maximum rating. And when we click on this, it's going to tell us that we need 150 ohm resistors. So I want to put a resistor on each one of these reds. I didn't show this. I um, kind of skipped over a little bit, but these are the red LEDs. And I mark um, the polarity. I always use a red marker to designate which one is positive. That way I don't have to guess about it later. So here's my 150 ohm resistor. Right now I'm putting a little bit of flux paste on it. Again, totally not necessary. It just speeds things up a little bit and it makes a really good connection. So if you can get the flux paste, that's fine. Now this is the bottom of the LED that goes to the top. We want to put a 150 ohm resistor on it as well. So now all four LEDs in here, because again, we're going from 4.5 volts to about five. Now what we're going to do is just tie the blacks together. These are going to be the grounds. So the LED negative terminals and the negative terminals from the bottom. And I left a big ball on there so that I could actually do that. Now, this is what I came up with. This is three red LEDs. Their negatives are tied together. And underneath that tape, there is an 150 watt, or I'm sorry, 150 ohm resistor for each one of these. And then there's one that goes up to the top bulb as well. You can see it, they're, they're underneath there. We just tie all of them together. And you do want to insulate these because if they get uh, where they can touch each other above the resistor, then it's not going to work correctly. And I just got a piece of spare wire. This one was way, way, way too thick. Uh, it took me seemingly like forever to get it to take solder. Um, so don't make the mistake that I did and use too thick of a gauge of wire here. But this is going to bridge from our positive 
where they're all tied together, back over to the other side of the potentiometer. And right there it goes. It goes in that middle leg. So whatever you're wanting to control goes in the middle. Here comes Bobby Lino. I can hear him hollering. And we'll put some shrink tubing on this and heat this up. It's a good idea to do that. You don't want anything to touch in here. This is only 5 volts, so it's not really of a, any danger of catch, catch it going fire, but you don't run it to short out. So here are all the na or the positives tied together. I could have done a better job. Someone mentioned in my live about using Wago connectors. You certainly could. They are a little expensive. I don't mind the solder stuff. This looks like a, a complete rat's nest, but when you get it put together, you'll see here in just a minute, you can't see any of this stuff, and it looks really, really good. And this is definitely... Um, a connection that's not coming apart. So now we're going to put the potentiometer in the hole that we drilled earlier with the washer and the nut. I'm going to tighten it down real good. Here in a few moments, I'll actually find the, the little knob that goes on there. So what I've decided to do is just take the, the plug that came out of the bottom, take some hot glue, bunch these lights up. Again, it looks crazy, but the last step was to get a diffuser you could use wax paper right here if you wanted to because these don't get hot enough to worry about the wax paper. But wax paper around this would be fine. You don't have to have this little uh, opaque piece that I've got. It just came from another um, LED light. And we're going to shove all that together and test it out here. And let's see how it's going to look. I think this is going to look really good in honor of Skittle Roo. We sure are going to miss Skittles, but this little red light here that we have... Was her color, the color of her collar? Wow, doesn't that look really good? It looks a little washed out and orange, but it is totally red. The other one up there is for Peepers, the dog we lost last year. So we have a red one for Skittles, a uh, purple one for Peepers, and when it's Bobo's time, we'll have a blue one. But that better be a long time, right, buddy? Okay, so this project is super fun, but I sure am going to miss that pup. I love you, Queen.